Hey, what's going on guys? This is Matt and this is part four of uh, the basement brewery build. This episode we are installing the plumbing. I have the sink behind me here. It's just a black basic tub with uh, some basic hardware here. And we have a pump that we installed on the bottom. And the plumbing is up top that we got to tie into. We have some copper for the water in that'll have to be uh, sweat some pipes. And then I have some PVC to run from the pump to the existing plumbing up above. So as you can see, I have a little bit of work to do. And it's not too much, the job isn't too hard. And I have it all mapped out and I have all the parts I need. I double checked, I had to make one more quick run to Ace Hardware because I did forget a few fittings. But I have everything I need now to get started. I am going to dry fit on the copper and the PVC first. That way I can make sure that it fits properly and then I can go ahead and start soldering and gluing everything together. The idea is to do the copper line first and then we'll move into the PVC. So we will get started with dry fitting. So after playing around with the dry fitting, I ended up wanting to uh, start doing the plumbing. So the first thing I did is this is the existing plumbing that is in the ceiling. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to install two shutoff valves. That way I can take my time with the plumbing and uh, now I can return the water back to the entire house while I work on the existing plumbing. So I have two shark bite, two uh, pressure fittings or shutoff valves for the hot and cold. And then I have two T's, one there and then one back there. That's going to go up and then over. <clears throat> and then this is the other side where the copper is going to come down here. So. That's where I'm at right now. I'm gonna go turn on the water to the house and then start uh, playing around with the dry fittings. Um, one more thing I wanted to mention too is the reason why I'm using pressure fittings is because I did not want to solder and sweat joints up near gas lines and electrical lines. So I have gas line right here, electrical lines. Over here I just have electrical lines. So I wanna keep an open flame away from this. So that's why I'm using pressure fittings. But the rest of it from connecting to this point onwards will be soldered, that's the plan, so. That's where we're at. Just finished up the copper line as you can see we got the sink connection right there into quick disconnects for hot and cold and then up there we tied it into the existing plumbing hot and cold so turned out really good uh 
dry fitting this was kind of difficult, especially for up here. There was quite a bit of 45s and weird angles, but surprisingly it turned out okay. I probably could have shortened up that one right there a little bit, but, uh, but I think it turned out okay. So it's, it's relatively straight. So we'll try these out. I'm using these uh, cheaper plastic mounts here. I'm hoping those hold up. I think maybe a few of these didn't actually sink into a stud. I use some drywall anchors too, so hopefully that helps up, but I might have to buy two more for in the middle here, but for now, I think this will work fine. I guess we'll, we'll play around with it for a first brew day and see if it wiggles around too much, but, uh, but yeah, I still got to test the water, but uh, it's looking pretty good. The next thing I got to do now is the PVC. So like I said, the sink's going to be right here, so it's going to run up that wall and then tag into the existing plumbing right there. So we're going to get going on that. So I wanted to make one last update before... I go ahead and start dry fitting all the PVC. I turned on the water, there were no leaks. I was very excited about that, considering that there's a lot of joints that I had to put together. Um, I also tested the sink out, so I put the plumbing in for the sink and it all turned out really good. The hot and cold is working. And the last thing I did before we get started is I actually put uh, a little piece of wood back there to hold in the back of the, uh, the sink here. I noticed that the feet that was given with the sink um, is are pretty cheap. They're just held together with a little screw. So I wanted to take as much weight off the feet as I could. So it's kind of being held up on the back wall and it's, it's screwed into the studs on the back. So it's kind of clipped into the wall there. So we're about ready to get started to start dry fitting and making some cuts here. And, uh, and then we're gonna start uh, doing some glue. Okay, so we have all the one and a quarter inch PVC installed. Right now we just have a screw to glue connection with a union. This part actually unscrews so I can service the pump later in its life. 45, 90, 45, all the way up to a valve. This will regulate the water going to the check valve. Um, if I don't have this, then the pump will keep turning on and off, which is not good for the life of the pump. So. Uh, you want some sort of valve before before a check valve to regulate the water going to the check valve. That way, um, this will stay when the water is coming into the pump. It's constantly staying on. It's better for a pump just to stay on, so this will help for that. And then I have the check valve up here. What a check valve is, is it's just a, it's a valve with a little um, a flap in the middle of it. So when the water gets pushed up the pipe over here, it goes to this far and this makes it so the water above the check valve doesn't backflow into the valve, um, into the pump I mean. So it's more of just, uh, it's really just for that. So the next thing I gotta do is I got to install all of the one and a half inch. I'm gonna tie it into that, um, the PVC under the tub right there with a Y or a T. And uh, we're gonna get going on that. All right, so we just finished all the plumbing. That's the one and a quarter, and then up above the check valve is one and a half inch pipe. Goes up there. It's kind of a mess up here, but it's the only way I could figure it out to make it work. I added, um, there wasn't a lot of play up here, so I actually had to add, add one of these uh, rubber 90 degree angles so I can kind of turn it a little bit, because this wasn't a, like a clean... Um, turn 90 degree turn there. I need a little bit more space. I tried to make it work so I could just hard line in the 90, but I just couldn't get it to work. So I'm just using that rubber 90 um, in place of the PVC 90. And anyway, I was thinking about it. It's probably good that I added that anyway, because now I can um, disconnect this plumbing here off the wall from the main plumbing in the house. So I guess think about it that way, it's it's probably fine. So anyway, I haven't tested the water yet. So I'm really hoping there aren't any leaks. This was a lot easier than doing copper since it's just prime and glue, uh, but we're not in the clear yet until I do some testing with the water. Uh, it says it takes two hours for this to cure. So I'm gonna let this cure for the next two hours and then we'll be back here in a bit to test the water. All right, so we are in good shape. It's the following morning and I went ahead and tested the pump. It wasn't actually working at all um, until I realized the, uh, I don't know if it was the 
power strip that it was plugged into that it wasn't supplying it enough power, but I just unplugged it from there and plugged it in, into a wall and it seemed to work up just fine. There's no leaks that I can see. Uh, we'll see over over time to see if there are leaks, but I'm I'm relatively confident that it's uh it's glued up appropriately and the soldering's done correctly. Um, so I'll show you what the uh, what the sink looks like. So here's the sink again. There's the copper line that's ran up and over. Tie-in is right there, and then all the PVC. I had to almost close the valve entirely. Um, apparently the flow rate from the sink isn't fast enough to keep up with the drain pumping. So this is almost shut and I'll show you, I'll show you why that is. Check valve all the way up and then it's tied into the plumbing. Again, I didn't see any leaks. So I'll show you the sink and the pump. So it might be a little loud, but when you turn it on, the pump kicks on. And the idea is to have it pumped at the same rate that this is flowing. If not, the pump will keep cycling on and off, which isn't good for the pump. And then when you turn this off, there it is. The only annoying thing is that the, um, it seems like there's just a little bit of water that the, uh, that stays steady. I wish the pump kind of triggered a little earlier so it wouldn't have, the water wouldn't be sitting on top of the tub like that. I wonder if there's some way I can calibrate the pump to make it kick on a little bit earlier so that way the 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 uh, level is a little lower so you can't really see the water. But it's the only way I could calibrate the valve to make it so it doesn't kick on and off. Even if I tweak it just a hair, it cycles on and off. So that will do fine for now. I'll look into the pump calibration though and see if that's something that they can I can tweak. And if, also, if you know in the comment section below, on how to do that, let me know. All the uh, parts and stuff will be in the comment section below. So that really covers this uh, episode of uh, the brewery build in my basement. I hope you enjoyed. Please make sure to subscribe and like the channel. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, let them, uh, you know, please write them down in the comment section below. I read the comment section every day, so uh, I'll probably respond pretty quickly to questions, comments, or concerns you might have. The next episode, I'm going to be starting to set up the brewery to actually make it look like a brewery. I have a desk and some shelving. I'm going to start hanging some stuff on the walls. I already put up a curtain here and uh, set up the stainless steel table with the brewing equipment. And uh, also, I want to build a fermentation chamber. So I think that's also going to be in the next video as well since setting up. I'm probably not going to film the setup. It's, uh, it's going to be pretty boring to watch. So I'll, I'll, just, uh, I'll just set it up and then just film from there. And then the fermentation chamber, I already have all the equipment uh, except one part that I got um, just yesterday, but it was the wrong size. So I had to return it and now I bought a new part. So that is probably not going to come in for another week, but I can still get everything else set up. So yeah, so that really concludes the video. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.